In this lecture, we are going to talk about sampling method in under digital hysteresis current control. So, we will we'll first talk about uh, you know analog current hysteresis control, then what are the sampling method and then how to implement in mixed signal domain. So, let us start with a current hysteresis control in a buck converter, where you know uh, this is the sense inductor current. So, you can put a current sense register or any other way. So, the sense current is here, then we have a reference current that has to be tracked and this is the hysteresis band. And see this, this is you know it can be realized using a pure you know hysteresis comparator and this is the control logic and then it will generate the uh, gate signal. Now, for more detail about this hysteresis control, you can refer to our earlier uh, NPTEL course lecture number 22. Now, the first step in this hysteresis control, the one way to realize although it is not a harder optimized, you know just for sake of understanding, you can use two comparator and one RS latch. So, that means whenever inductor current that means this is the waveform. So, here the first one is the I ref and then you have a delta I that means the valley current is this is my valley current and this is like my peak current. So, here I have taken peak current to be I ref and the valley current is my I ref minus delta I h and inductor current is actually forced to follow the trajectory within that that means the ripple within, within that uh, peak and valley and that way this R s lat will generate the gate signal and you will get the corresponding gate signal. Okay. Now, if we increase or decrease the hysteresis band, then a ripple will increase and decrease as a result time period will also vary. Now, the first question in this, uh, so here I was showing that if you take a pure uh, you know the constant current reference, then you can keep the inductor current within that band. But what will happen if you close the loop, because this reference current may be coming from the outer loop and when you implement this current reference, outer loop means there will be some voltage ripple because if you draw the waveform of the output voltage, there will be some ripple information will be there that will be there on top of the average value and that ripple will be propagated through this controller. Let us say it is only a proportional control, if it is then this ripple will be amplified by the proportional gain. So, the current reference will also have some ripple information. And you can see the current reference will carry the ripple information because let us say we are taking I ref to be for simplicity some proportional gain V ref minus V 0. So, you will get an inverted voltage ripple in the I ref profile. And since the valley current is simply I ref minus delta H, so inductor current will be inside that band. Now, in this case the current ripple is not same as the hysteresis band because due to this ripple in the I ref that is actually differing. So, you will get a difference between the actual current ripple and the hysteresis band and that will make the design parameter sensitive and you can say R c is the say so if we take a buck converter where the output voltage is dominated by E s r then the slope of this current ripple uh, which is the reference current because the slope of this output voltage is the E s r slope which is R c into m 1 for the rising slope of the current and since there is a negative sign. So, it will be like a during on time it will be fall and then it will be also multiplied by the proportional gain. So, depending upon the value of proportional gain R c. So, this ripple of the I ref will vary as a result there is a difference between delta I l and delta I h. So, any analog current mode control if you close the outer loop will suffer from this problem because our ultimate objective was that inductor current should follow the hysteresis band 
and at the same time we wanted to achieve the current ripple to be equal to the hysteresis band, but that is not possible in analog control particularly for this case when the outer loop is closed due to the effect due to the voltage ripple. Now, how do you go for digital control? So, suppose I want the voltage loop to be digital, but the current loop is analog. So, if the current loop is analog that means, you can continue to use the current comparator outside, but only a reference current which will be using as one of the input of the uh, hysteretic comparator that will be coming from the voltage loop digital voltage loop. Now, so you need volt A to D converter that means, output voltage is passed to an A to D converter. Then it is the same method of any other digital control architecture that we have discussed in current mode control or voltage mode control the output voltage is uh, you know digitized using ADC. Then error voltage is passed through a discrete time or digital compensator then this number is digital and it is passed through a D to A converter. Now, the output of the D to A converter is an analog current. So, it is now an analog current reference it is in analog domain and this will be used to compare with the uh, hysteresis I mean along with the hysteresis band. So, you will get a profile of the inductor current and it is something like this. Now, since it is a hysteresis control again this question will come because we have discussed in lecture number 11 that when because hysteresis control the time period actually is, is a variable quantity because it depends on the band and there is no clock it is asynchronous it is a purely comparator base. So, any change in the input voltage if there is a slope change then the, the switching frequency will change. If there is any change in the let us say I ref you know or if you change the delta I h so it will vary. So, that means, the switching frequency can vary even cycle by cycle there can be jitter because if you have a any sensing noise in the current that will also cause some jitter in the time period that is why this is one of the drawback of hysteresis control. Hysteresis control is sensitive to measurement noise because there is no a latching mechanism or there is no modulation like you know unlike in fixed frequency modulation, uh, modulation where it is locked with respect to a fixed frequency clock. If we go to constant on time then we have a monoshot timer particularly that duration is fixed, but the other duration is exposed to the comparator. But here both the on and off durations are exposed to the comparator output because there will be a sensing noise. So, you can have always have a jitter in the time period and that will cause slight deviation in the switching frequency around its nominal value. Even the steady state variation is different, but during cycle by cycle there can be slight jitter in the switching clock uh, effective switching clock. Now, now the question is since the switching clock itself is jittering and there can be also variation of switching clock because of uh, this operation then how to make and we also saw that you know analog control there is a band uh, you know the I ref has was carrying some information of the voltage ripple multiplied by the controller gain and how to digitize the voltage. Okay. So, one of the method if we use a uniform sampling then there will be a there is a mismatch between sampling and switching instant and that will cause multi limit cycle oscillation and for detail one can refer to this paper. So, if you do not that means, if there is a mismatch between the sampling if you use a uniform sampling clock. So, there will be a mismatch between sampling point and the switching point and that will call multi limit cycle oscillation. But, if we use a event based sampling how to decide the event. So, let us consider the ideal condition no delay. So, whenever the gate signal goes high that means, if you take the gate signal which is going out at the rising edge of the gate signal I take the sample of the output voltage this output voltage sample and that sample will be constant for the entire duration until the next edge of the gate signal comes. So, that means, I am now detecting an event it is a event based sampling here the event is the rising edge of the gate signal that means, whenever the gates will turn on that edge will take to take the sample of the output voltage. Now, one can ask you cannot take this sample because that will be noisy, but we will see there will be delay effect. But ideally for to start with if you take this event as the point of sampling 
then we will capture the voltage sample and then this voltage sample will be processed through this digital comparator and DAC and it will generate the reference current and here I am not taking any delay. Then the waveform will look like the I ref will be constant for the whole cycle even though there can be you know ripple of the output voltage, but since you are taking the sample at the beginning and you are not allowing any more information of the output voltage to pass through the ADC because there is no more sample you are taking till the next edge come. So, this sample voltage will be insensitive to the ripple parameter. So, that means there will be no variation it will be constant. Once you make that, so this I ref will be constant for the whole cycle then dealt the valley current that is your peak current. So, this is your peak current and the valley current will be peak minus what? It will be peak minus delta I h right. So, it will also follow the same trajectory, but with a difference in the hysteresis current. Then inductor will simply follow. In this case, the current will as if see you can see the ripple current and the hysteresis band. If you can make sure it is stable, they will be identical. Okay, so, further detail about this technique you can refer to this paper. Now, once you do that what is I told you that ideally it is not possible because we do not want and in fact you cannot take the sample and process immediately you also need some time. So, here is the time that means you take whenever you get the gate signal that means you have to turn on the turn of the MOSFET or turn on the MOSFET high side MOSFET. But that gate signal when it actually goes to the actual switch pass to the driver there will be delay always because the delay is due to the there will be some dead time there will be driver delay propagation delay. So, all this delay will be accommodated. So, you actually are taking sample when it was before turning of the turning on the switch. So, you are taking the clean output voltage sample and by that way you can update the reference current accordingly. So, you are not taking the actual sample. So, that means your I ref can vary. Similarly, whenever you have generated I ref that means you can take the sample even a little bit earlier you can delay the actual gate signal. So, but this delay will also have stability impact, but we are not discussing this delayed stability analysis because it will be quite complex and quite advanced, but just for conceptual understanding imagine if you can generate the reference current which is a fixed value for the whole cycle even for the analog comparator there will be some delay of the comparator. So, your actual inductor current will be slightly greater than the hysteresis band because of the delay in the comparator. So, here the variation in the current ripple and the hysteresis band is due to the propagation delay of the comparator. Okay? So, you can also implement this technique the valley that means here I am using the peak value same as the reference and the value I am using the reference minus delta I h. But suppose if I use a reference to be value in this case I am using value to be reference and peak is a reference plus delta I h. So, then you can implement value current mode control. In fact, you can also implement average current mode control. How? In case of average current mode control, average hysteresis current mode control, you take peak to be I ref, I ref I ref plus delta I h by 2 and I value to be I ref minus delta I h by 2. Then you are essentially forcing the inductor to follow this uh, you know the inductor current profile will be you know it will be constrained within that I peak and I value. So, naturally that average will be I ref. So, that means the average inductor current can follow I ref and you can implement average inductor current. So, in summary we have recapitulate the analog hysteresis control method. We have discussed about event based sampling in hysteresis current control and we have also discussed about mixed signal hysteresis current mode control implementation. But there are other structure like a fully digital hysteresis control, 
but these are more like advanced research topic. But if one can understand how to implement a hysteresis digital control, so the mixed signal will be the starting point and we will implement it in MATLAB. So, I want to finish it here. Thank you very much.